Hey, what's up guys? It's Archie from Larice Munger Gaming. Today we have a new unreleased keyboard by Apple Maker. Hopefully I'm pronouncing their name correctly. But anyway, full disclosure, they sent this out to me for a review. This is the GK68X. It's essentially a 65% design with 68 keys. It features a lot of the latest technologies and mechanical keyboards. We're gonna go over all those features in today's video, so let's go ahead and get started. So here at the front of the box, you'll notice the Apple Maker logo. It is a bit glossy with a little bit of a textured finish, and then and here on the bottom right, you'll have some holographic lettering. I'm not gonna even attempt to pronounce that, but you do have a little website right there, also embossed and in holographic lettering. So the front of the box looks quite nice. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of it. Here on the bottom side, you don't have anything. On the left side, nothing. On the right side, nothing as well. And then on the top side, you do have a little bit of information. Like I said, this is the GK68X. It does mention ABS here and PB a little bit confusing. I'm not sure what that refers to. I believe the PBT is going to refer to the keycaps, but ABS could also refer to the keycaps. So we're going to take a look at those keycaps later in the video and see exactly what we're dealing with. Uh, that's all for the sides. There's also nothing on the back. It's a pretty straightforward design, guys. So very, very simplistic. That's pretty much it for the outside of the box. So let's go ahead and open it up. So here at the bottom, you do have a little tab. This did travel quite a way, so the box is a little bit beat up, but hopefully everything is okay. It did arrive in some bubble wrap, so I'm not expecting any damage. Okay, so first things first, you have this insert at the very front of the box. You'll notice GK68 series RGB, so it does have RGB. Also, one thing of particular notice is it does also feature Bluetooth. So the website advertises wired or wireless mode, so whatever suits your interest, it does have both modes available. Now, right off the bat, guys, one of the key features here is that spacebar is supposed to be modular, meaning you're able to swap out the spacebar for three different keys. I've never seen this done before, so this is a pretty unique thing for this particular keyboard. And then you have some directions here as far as the Bluetooth goes. Let's go ahead and open it up. Not much to add there or right there. I don't quite understand the instructions here, but here on the back, you do have some instructions in English. As far as some of those media keys and some shortcuts for various functions, I won't go into explicit detail with all those, but there's the back of this insert. So pretty much it for that. If you guys have been following the channel, typically I reserve the keyboard for last. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the accessories first. There's nothing at the bottom of the box. Let's go ahead and open it up here on the back. So one thing at a time, we do have a white box here. I'm assuming these are gonna be the accent keycaps. Let's go ahead and take a look. Actually, no, these are some trial switches. I see that blue stem. I'm assuming these are clicky. So you can hear the click right there. You might not be able to make that out, but it does say Cherry on there. So all three switches are what appears to be Cherry MX Blue. Guys, one thing that I'm gonna point out real quick is I will be updating the description slash caption below the video. Anything that I find out that's new, I'm gonna post in there. So make sure you check that out. All right, so the next thing in line is a type C USB cable. This is a nice touch I don't typically see with a keyboard manufacturers. It is braided, so it looks nice. Obviously, this has a pretty distinct look. Typically, what you see included with production keyboards is plain rubberized cables. The cable ends here looks to be gold plated as well, and the ends are also nice and red. But overall, it looks like a pretty good cable. Okay, so next in line, I did mention this briefly before, but apparently the space bar is modular. I have not experienced that firsthand, so this looks to be the piece that you can swap out at the bottom. This is an unboxing video, so I haven't gotten to that part yet, but we're gonna get to that, so pretty cool. Apparently there's a cutout on the plate underneath the space bar where you can swap this out and add three more keys, so pretty unique. We'll check that out more in detail later in the video. All right, the next thing that we have here are the accent keycaps. Let's go ahead and pull some of these out. So the keycaps, I would have to say these are PBT. They've got to be PBT. They feel extremely thick, so really thick walls, and they have a really nice weight and a nice feel to them. They definitely feel premium, guys. I, I'm actually kind of impressed. All right, next up, guys, looks like this is the final product. 
You got two pullers. Like I said, the keyboard is hot swappable. I'm assuming this is the switch puller right here, made of a sturdy metal. And then right here, you have a switch puller. This keyboard is able to come in two different brand varieties. You got Cherry MX and Gateron, several different switches for either. So you can customize it with either brand according to what you like, linear, tactile, heavy, light, either one of those. But you should be able to find keycaps for this keyboard quite easily. As opposed to one of the keyboards that I've unboxed recently, it's the Ducky 12SF. That has a unique right shift key that's hard to find keycaps for, but as far as this layout goes, it definitely looks like you have a lot of options. Just take a look at the inside bottom of the box and make sure there's nothing else in there, and there isn't. So that's pretty much it for the accessories, guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at the keyboard. All right, so here's the keyboard. It doesn't come with a dust cover. It is encased in this plastic. Let's go ahead and remove that. It is on there pretty nice, so it's nice and sealed. Make sure I don't drop it. Okay, so there it is, guys. Clicking in the switches, honestly, I'm going to safely assume these are Cherry MX Blues with that clicky tactile switch. I prefer linear switches, but I'm definitely down for a little bit of variety. So pulling this out, guys, there's several first impressions that I have. I don't know where you want me to start, but the thing that sticks out to me most, guys, is the fact that this backspace is moved over one entire unit and you have this key to the left of it. So I don't know where you guys stand as far as keyboarding, but but I took keyboarding in middle school like 15 years ago and I've been typing one sort of way. I feel like this is gonna be a pretty significant adjustment for me. I'm hoping that we can swap out this key and maybe macro it out to be another backspace key because I particular don't use this key at all. But that's just me in particular. It may be different for you guys. At a first glance, that is my only potential negative. It could be positive or neutral or negative, but for me, that's just one potential negative. There's a lot of positives. Let's go ahead and talk about the keycaps. So these keycaps are XDA profile and they are die sublimated. If you're not familiar with that, XDA basically the keycaps as you can see are what you would call unsculpted. With the Cherry OEM profile you'll notice that the different keys on different rows are going to be different heights but these are pretty much flat and unsculpted regardless of the row. They have a really really nice weight and feel to them. There's a little bit of texture but not too much. The legends of the set are die sublimated, so the font is really accurate and highly visible. Die sublimation is typically used on PBT keycaps, so these should be extremely durable. Now, the size of the right shift key appears to be 1.75U, so I would say that would be your biggest challenge for getting keycaps, but there are plenty of keycaps in the market that include that size shift key, as opposed to 2U for the right shift key on the 12SF. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the design and build quality. As I said, said previously this is a 65% layout and the website advertises a 100% full aluminum frame. This feels pretty sturdy with very very minimal flex and however it is definitely still lightweight. For comparison's sake I do have the Mecha Mini here and the Mecha Mini is substantially heavier than this. This still feels like almost like a blend between a plastic and metal keyboard so a really nice weight. So that's the build quality. Let's talk about the design. It does have pretty small bezels all the way around. Looking at their website, it does appear that they have different body styles along with the different colored keycaps. This keyboard appears to be the tan and carbon model while there is a white and gray option available. And that body appears to be a little bit different and a little bit bigger. But let's go ahead and take a look at the bottom. Very minimalistic. You just have this logo here at the bottom. Looks like Sky Loom. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly, but there's there's the serial number and also a few logos and the rating as well. So taking a look at the rubber feet here, they appear to be really, really durable and recessed so it doesn't look like they would come off and they feel plenty grippy, honestly. So this might be a concern for some of you folks, but this is not height adjustable. But as far as first impression goes, the angle of the keyboard seems to be pretty good. Taking a look at the backside here, you'll notice a little bit more of those angles in the design as well as the recessed Type-C port. 
it. So depending on your cable, it might be a little bit restrictive, but it does look like it has enough space to accommodate most cables. That's pretty much it for the wired mode. Now guys, this does come with a wireless option and it does advertise a 1900 milliamp hour battery. So it should last quite some time. Obviously, first impression, I haven't really tested that yet, but a pretty decent sized battery nonetheless for a keyboard. Now real quick guys, let me go ahead and remove one of these keycaps and demonstrate that hot swap function. I prefer the wired keycap puller, but this will have to do. Pretty simple removal and installation process. Now, next things up guys, let's go ahead and take a look at the RGB. The website in particular advertises over 16 million different LED colors. All right, so I dimmed some of the lights so you can better see the RGB, but the RGB looks pretty phenomenal. The back plate is white, so it does kind of radiate the light a little bit better. And these keycaps are not RGB backlit, so RGB is not gonna be as strong on this as opposed to, of course, other keycaps that are backlit. But for me in particular, I think this is pretty nice. Nice. You can also adjust the brightness and the speed of the RGB using the FN key and the different arrow keys. All right guys, so the keyboard sounds nice. I think the stabilizers are pretty good. Their spacebar rattles a little bit in my opinion, but it's not bad. Now next up we have one of the unique functions of this keyboard and uh, something that I'm actually excited to test. Apparently you can remove the spacebar and it should be modular underneath here and we can swap it out to get three different keys. So let's go ahead and give that a try. All right, so you can see the one switch and the two stabilizers here at the top and bottom of this removable plate. Let's take a quick look at the PCB that's exposed right here. Here are the screw mounts right and left side. There are some additional switch inputs for the new space back plate. Let's go ahead and install that. So here is the new plate. This plate and the previous one appear to be extremely durable. So the left and right sides have stabilizers, whereas the far right switch does not have one. So so let's go ahead and install that. All right guys, so there is the new spacebar module. If you're interested in custom key functions, you can absolutely do that. I, in particular, don't have any use for that, so I'll be sticking with the plain traditional spacebar. Nonetheless, that is a pretty unique function that I've never seen done before on a production keyboard. If you guys are interested in Apple Maker's GK68XS, there will be a link in the description below. It has a ton of great features. Just to recap, you can run it in wireless and wired mode. It's hot swappable, a full, aluminum build, customizable space key if you're interested in custom key functions, really nice RGB lighting, switch options from two of the most reputable companies in the business, Gateron and Cherry, and it comes with the accessories that you need to get started. So the only potential negative that I can come up with is the fact that the backspace key has moved over one entire unit. So if that's not a detractor for you, I definitely think this is a great keyboard option if you're in the market for a 65% keyboard. If you guys are interested in more of these videos, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe the channel by subscribing. I'll see you guys on the next one. This is Little Rice Muncher Gaming signing off. Thanks.